Hi, my name is Steve Geary with GE Aviation, the Customer Technical Education Center, better known as CTEC. I'm the training manager for the CF34 engine programs. Today we're going to present you a video on preservation of the CF34 engine family. So this video is going to focus on long-term pre preservation for the CF34-10E, the CF34-8E, the CF34-8C, the CF34-10A, and the CF34-3A. Now, long-term preservation, unlike the short-term, it requires us to open up the cowling, get into the engine, and add, add some uh, lubricants for preservation of the oil system and the fuel system. These procedures will show you more details of those, and I'd also encourage you to talk to your support team if you have any detailed questions. Okay, now we're going to talk about long-term preservation. Long-term preservation is basically from 180 days to two years maximum. In this case, you're going to enter the aircraft, deactivate the fuel system, and deactivate the ignition system. Once we've done that, we're going to go out to the engine, open the nacelles, and we're going to first of all add a Braco engine preservative oil to the oil tank and then secondly we're going to add oil to the fuel system both of those will be for preserving a the oil system and then b preserving the fuel system once we've done that we're going to close the cell up and then go to the outside and then we'll do the same preservation as we did on the short term for the long term we also want to make sure that we record in the logbook exactly when it's done because it's very critical that if you're going to redo this, what you're allowed to do as many times as you want, that you make sure that you do it prior to the expiration of the two-year date. So first thing we're going to do is open the nacelles and we're going to go over the right-hand side of the engine in the oil lubrication system. Now we're on the, the right-hand side of the engine and this is where we're going to add the preservative lubrication to the oil system. So essentially the first step we're going to do is we're going to add one quart in what we refer to as Braco, but the manual may show some other approved lubricants that you can put in. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go in and open up the cap, look inside, make sure there's no foreign objects in there, and then we'll just go ahead and add the Braco and close it back up. One other thing here, Anytime you're doing preservation, and also when you're doing short-term preservation, you want to take a look at the level in the oil tank. Because for both short-term and long-term, you want to make sure that the oil is at a serviceable limit before you do anything. So once we've closed up the oil tank and have the Braco in there, we're going to go over to the left side of the engine where I'll show you how you crank it to circulate the oil through the system. Before we start cranking the engine, you have to make sure that in the aircraft that you've deactivated the fuel system and also de-energized the igniter by pulling the breaker. When you come over to the right side, you want to look at the starter, and just like the oil tank, you want to make sure that it is also at a serviceable level. There's two ways to crank the air starter. One, if your APU is still available, you can go ahead and crank it for the five minutes using the APU. If not, use a ground support air supply cart to turn that. And once you do that, you simply go to the starter air valve using the override and basically crank and let the air run through that. Basically for the oil system preservation, you basically just run that for five minutes. Once we finish that, we're now going to go to the preservation of the fuel system. So on the aft side of the gearbox, you can see the main fuel pump. And so what we're going to do here is first disconnect the main fuel hose up at the pylon. And you'll see there that there's a, uh, there's a quick disconnect there, which also is a secondary to assure that no fuel gets into the compartment. The second thing we're going to do is disconnect at the other end, it's a four bolt flange on the fuel pump itself. What you're going to need there is if you look at the maintenance manuals, there's a special kit which will adapt to that, which will allow you to put the 3.5 gallons of the corrosion preventative oil in there. Now once you have that connected and you start inducing the uh, oil, you're going to again crank the starter, like I said before, APU or if you have to use a ground cart, you will do that. Now, there is no time limit on this, so you want to be cautious to make sure that you're staying within the cycle limits of the starter and not exceeding the, the crank time. The way you'll know that you have the adequate amount of preservative in the engine is that oil will start coming out the back. And once that happens, you can, you can stop spinning the starter and you know that you now have preservation for the pump and for the critical uh, components. So once we're done with that, we're going to basically close up the nacelle and get ready to install the caps.
And now that we've finished the preservation of the internal systems, both the oil system and the fuel system, and we've closed up the nacelle, now we're going to give you a quick summary and a demonstration on how to add the forward cover and the aft cover to prevent FOD and possibly moisture in the engine. Once we've taken care of everything under the nacelle, as far as capping and covering any openings, then we're going to deal with covering the inlet. And the main purpose for covering the inlet is to protect against possible FOD from entering in through the fan and damaging the blades, or also going into the core of the engine where you could actually get FOD into the turbine. The secondary thing is to eliminate the amount of moisture that could gather in the inlet. One area of real concern is back at the abrasive material near the fan. If that gets water on it, it could expand causing excessive rub on the blades when you first start the engine. So once we cover the engine, which we'll show you some more detail later, we're going to go to the aft end and show you how we cover that. So now we're at the aft end of the engine, which is also critical to cover to eliminate the chance of FOD or possible moisture. Now, in this area, you'll see we have the bypass, which is essentially the same area as the front, where if we get moisture in, we could cause damage to composites or abradables. And then we have the vent from the core compartment, which is very, very small. And again, FOD does include possible rodents or insects, and as you know, this would be a great place for beehives, which has happened in some cases. Uh, number three, we have the actual engine, which is uh, going in here to the LPT area, where if rodents or FOD got into there and got into the actual turbine, could then cause some real serious issues when you start the engine up. And finally, you have the aft vent area, where you could have issues with moisture getting in here, or again, rodents, and if they got in there, they could possibly get into the sump areas where you could possibly end up getting uh, damage to bearings and some of the internal workings of the engine. So what we're gonna to wanna to show you is how we're gonna cover this entire area and tightly seal it just like we did to the front. So here's an example of a fuselage mounted engine. This is typical of the CF34-8C, the CF34-10A, and the CF34-3. And so what you have here is you have a front cover that completely covers the inlet, as we had already described, and has a suspender type system which goes back and covers the aft. It's very reliable because both ends work against each other to keep it tightly together during wind and situations like that. Again, the main thing is to keep FOD and moisture out of the inlet and the exhaust. So what we have here is a typical under the wing high bypass engine. This is actually one of our GE90. As you can see in the front of the engine, we have ground support equipment cover with the suspender type straps going back and covering the complete exhaust system. This covers the bypass, this covers the engine exhaust, and this covers the center vent tube, which is very important. Now also in this picture, you can see some singularities such as vents, for instance, looks like the override hole and any other openings. On the CF34 engine, we have NACA scoops, we have some vents that you'll also want to walk around and inspect and possibly use some waterproof tape or something like that to cover those areas. So I hope this video proves to be helpful to you to help you uh, keep your engines up and running and get them back in operations as soon as you can after preservation.